it's going. I'll cut the first part off. Here we go. All right, all right. What's going on, everybody? We'll keep Steely Dan on here for a second, but hey, it's Rich. Wrong with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rich the Architect here, back for another episode. And today, got a great, uh, great guest here with me, Brian Harbinson from Clearbridge. And uh, yeah, yeah, no, actually, Ryan. Ryan reached out to me recently, wanted to be on, so here we are. So, uh, excited to have him on. Um, we'll talk a little little business, but uh, we're going to get into some other stuff. Um, both have some kind of common interest with gaming and, and whatnot, so let's just jump right into it. Uh, Ryan, thanks for thanks for coming on. Yeah, man, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. So yeah, yeah. So Ryan, why don't you just start off? Why don't you just tell a little bit about what you do professionally, and then we'll sure. jump into some other things. Yeah, so uh, I'm with uh, Clearbridge Branding Agency. Uh, we're a full marketing firm down here in South Jersey uh, with offices in Philly and Chicago. Uh, really a group of industry vets that come together to kind of start something special. So uh, we're a full agency. So we handle everything uh, from your brand, from branding to creative and really create campaigns, right? So we just make sure that uh, the messaging and the target audience and uh, what you see is the same across all the platforms to help get your you know, uh, message across to the right people. So what you see on a billboard, same thing you hear on TV or on the radio and social and it's good. So okay. it's, and it's you crazy. Cover, you cover crazy all the mediums. Be. Yeah. So we, uh, we do everything. So, um, you know, we'll handle all the internal and external stuff too. uh, PR. So we can do like, we do all kinds of stuff. So like we've worked with a lot of food companies, getting them in product placements and stuff like that inside like Costco, uh, all the way to uh, developing like uh, pitch decks for startups uh, or, uh, you know, making sure people's email signatures are all the same. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it's just the simple little things that uh, yeah. Yeah, keep, keep, keep the consistency there. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's funny. It's funny. Even as a one person shop, I can't keep those things consistent some days. <laughs> man, you got to keep it all the same. You got to make sure the story is all the same across everything. So yeah, yeah. a lot of people go rogue and small. Uh, I love when people grab stuff off the internet, try to stretch out like a 200 pixel picture to try to make it an eight and a half by 11. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's funny. I'll get I'll get stuff like you know, I'll get a new client who will even, like, you know, find an image of a floor plan and they'll send that to me. And I'm like, <laughs> I can't read this. <laughs> like, I don't know what any of the text says, dude. It's 72 DPI. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, but, and you said you fill it off in Chicago in terms yes. of offices so yeah, so, nationwide or? Yeah. Yeah. So we're, we do everything. So trying to go international. So working on some stuff for that too. So ah, cool. Let's see what happens. Cool. Yeah. We do a lot. Uh, our food's a big world for us. So uh, we love the food world. Um, you know, restaurants, chains, and like uh, restaurant groups are good for us. Any kind of like food packaging and processing is great for us. So we're in Chicago because of the food factor as well. So I gotcha. It's all about food in Chicago, man. I tell you what. Yeah. 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 No, it's, uh, yeah, I think this is, a, this is actually a good segue because, you know, some of the work I do, I try to be in like the hospitality industry. So I'm always like, hey, you know, I tell people like, hey, what's a good project for me? And I'm like, places that you go on the weekends, places you go for fun, you know, that's yeah. what, that's what I want to be involved with. So, you know, foods, food, obviously everybody wants to eat, you know? So, um, but yeah, so, so going into that, um, you know, I know the first time I met you was actually at a ribbon cutting for my wife's business, but that it's day when so you, long ago, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was four or five years ago, probably it's crazy. Yeah, Time maybe flies. even maybe even six. I don't. Yeah, it was because I know I was here in seventeen, and she probably was there for like two years. So yeah, maybe fifteen even. But um, but yeah, but I remember. Um, there was a point in that ribbon cutting where you know the chamber had was was hosting it, and they were like they gave everybody an op like an opportunity to speak. Hey, what kind of events you got going on? And you spoke up, and you were like, "Hey, I'm opening up a board game shop." And I'm like sitting here, I'm like, like, sometimes those things come up 
it, you know, people are talking. And I'm like, hey, yeah, okay, you're making kittens for mittens for kittens, or you know, like you're just like kind of like blanking out a little <laughs> bit. But you say board game shop, and I'm like, huh? <laughs> I I literally like I know you're probably you're familiar with boardgamegeek.com, the website. Yeah, it's great. You know, and I I literally was like searching for gaming groups and clubs and whatnot. And uh, I, you know, I was finding things, but not necessarily um, local at that time. Um, and I will say my, um, one of the reasons why I, I started really getting into it was uh, my brother-in-law in Pennsylvania. He actually was a mod, he used to be a moderator for Board Game Geek. Oh, nice. Yeah. And you go over to his house and he would get, because he was a moderator, a lot of like, you know, Kickstarter games. And Tons stuff. of free get, shit, right? Yeah. He would get, you know, test, tests games and stuff and he would just give me games i'd go I home know. and he'd be like oh uh you know i think your your eight-year-old would like this game or or that and like i'd sit down in his basement and just look at his you know his wall of like a hundred games and, and i got everything. something similar downstairs so <laughs> yeah 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 i don't quite have a hundred games but it's it's like you start getting into it and all of a sudden you're like i ran out of shelf space i need more space you know <laughs> yeah well you know That's it's like funny so like you know the gate the board game thing was kind of like a, a happy accident so like um I, you know, I, I, so I'm with ClearBridge now, but before I ran, I ran my own company for about 10 years with two other partners. And, um, you know, we, uh, we, we have a software business. So we, we made like games and, um, you know, we've got two published games on Nintendo DS. Um, and, uh, I worked for a publisher for, uh, three different publishers for many years back in the day. So I got about a hundred plus titles under my belt that I was in development with for Sony and Nintendo from the publisher side. Um, so it's funny. So, and before that, I worked in the retail space forever. So, like, I've worked at Funko Land and GameStop and Game Crazy and, you know, all that stuff. So, you know, I've always kind of been in the game sector. And when I was 24, a buddy of mine kind of wanted to start up our own software business. So, literally, same deal. Three guys in a basement kind of thing, right? And, yeah. uh, you know, flash forward a couple of years, we went to uh, an apartment and then we were above an old a uh, glass uh, factory uh, that had like a, a conference room that we kind of rented from them. Um, and, you know, like most people, when you live on the West Co on the East coast um, on a very heavily, um, you know, dominated West coast industry, you would probably get into the PC market because it's just easier to develop. I mean, this is 2000. Man, I don't even know. 2006. So like there was no unity to create stuff. So unity is a game engine that you can yeah. utilize that will kind of basically like you can write all your code kind of in the same language and then uh, kind of um, output it to different platforms. So uh, it'll, it'll output it into Nintendo code and the Sony code uh, on Mac, on PC, on Xbox and all that. Back in the day, the PS2 days, kind of where we're at, right? You, 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 you kind of had, if you were a bigger studio and you had an engine that kind of worked on, um, you could kind of write some of the code similar, but you know, you wouldn't be able to do these full blown, like copy paste stuff. Like you'd have to like be able to, all right, we saved 40% of the PS2 code on the GameCube. So we found out it's easier to go from PS2 to GameCube to Xbox. I mean, I don't know if that's true, but that kind of mentality and we were mm -hmm. able to save 40% of the code. So, all right, so let's write the other 60% of the game. Now that we're on Nintendo's platform because Nintendo's using a different OS than Sony and Microsoft were using to create games. So we were kind of in this world where it was like, wow, oh, we want to make games for the DS, which was like crazy town because there was no way for us to communicate. We had to be a licensed Nintendo developer and it was ways for us to try to speak with Nintendo was like really hard. So Long story short, uh, we used some connections that we had in the industry, got licensed to be a developer for Nintendo, which is crazy town. And we were able to kind of develop games for Nintendo. And mm -hmm. and we would run into issues, like trying to figure out like how to do stuff. Because I mean, we were writing all the code by ourselves. Like we were creating an engine that we created to be able to build these games that we were making. Yeah, We would have an issue and be like, all right, good. This email looks good. It breaks down everything that we need to know. Very quick and to the point. Like, all right. Gonna send this to NOA, so Nintendo of America. Bang, we sent it to Nintendo of America in Seattle. They're like, Thank you, we've received your email. We are now gonna translate it to Japanese and send it to Nintendo of Japan. They're like, Okay, so then uh, Nintendo Japan gets the email, they read the email in Japanese, and then they say, Okay, we got it. And then they send it back to NOA. And then NOA goes, We've received your email from Japan, we're now gonna translate it back to English for you. 
and then they sent it back to English and then they sent it back to us. And we're like, great. Thank you so much for that two week email process. However, our, our questions to our problems have not been answered in any way. So here's a new email that we are sending now. And go, like, there was no forums for us to go to. Like mm-hmm. it just, it just, the world wasn't there. So, you know, long story short, we kind of moved around a little bit, made our way through and eventually ended up in a small town in, in South Jersey. And it was zone residential or zone uh, retail. So we talked to the town and we're like, uh, at this point, we already had a game published on the, on the DS. And we're like, oh, we want to move in. We're working on our second game. And they're like, well, this is zone retail. What are you guys going to sell? And we're like, we're going to sell our DS game. So we had like a <laughs> like a display case with like one DS game in there. Like this yeah. is for sale if you want to buy it, right? <laughs> so as we were doing that, we were coming up with ways to kind of fund the software business. And we were going to like yard sales and we were flipping board games. Hmm. 10 cents, 25 cents, 50, selling for four or five bucks at like local nerd cons, make some dough and then buy new monitors, pay the pay our team, like all that stuff. So eventually we wind up having like a thousand games between me and my two partners and we're mm-hmm. like shit we might as well just sell board games fuck it right like, let's see what happens right so we kind of all were x funko gamestop game crazy guys so we just kind of took that model flipped it around and we did the board game thing yeah and like the first month it was like i mean mind you the facility that we were in or the retail space we were in was about 650 square feet 80 mm-hmm. square feet of that was a retail store. Yeah. 80. So you walk in, you're like, oh, and here's the store. Okay, here we go. And I can walk and now here's a shelf. Okay, have a nice day. And, you know, the first month was like, okay. And then like the second month came in and we were like, hey, we made 300 bucks this month. That's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. And word kept growing and growing. And then fast forward like four years later. Uh, we're in a 5,000 square foot facility known as the Nerd Mall. So we do board mm-hmm. games and we do action figures and there's video games and there's records and there's yo-yos and there's uh, comic books. So it, it evolved into this thing and kind of no longer in the, uh, the, the, game, the game space, making games more like website and like applications and stuff like that. So yeah, uh, crazy ride, man. Crazy ride. Yeah, yeah. I, I, uh, I, I retired. A couple of years back, but um, my partners are still running and they're kicking mm-hmm. some ass. And uh, the Nerd Mall is it's pretty cool, man. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I've I've been there a couple of times, and uh, my kids like what is it? Um, with the Funko, Funko Pops, uh, and all that. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I can't That's imagine right. being like ten years old being able to go to that store. I would lose my mind. Oh yeah, yeah. No, my kids go. My kids gravitate to that area like every time yeah. we go, and I end up buying like five of them. I'm like, I just wanted to come for one board game, but <laughs> you gotta get a game and, <laughs> you know, five or six of those, or, you know, depending, um, you know, how many, how many of my kids are with me, <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. So it's, it's, it was a crazy space, man. We had a lot of fun, like developing stuff and some crazy stories. I mean, if you ever start a software company, I mean, in the early days, I mean, mind you, again, this was like in the early mid 2000s and we're we're developing stuff and we're like oh yeah we're starting a, a pc company oh, yeah we're gonna do this and that and people are like oh here's my old computer dude we had like five scanners because people were just unloading their shit on us they're like oh take my scanner you'll need the scanner for your technology company like so we had like this room at one of the guy's apartments he literally had a two-bedroom apartment one of the apartment uh, one of the bedrooms was literally like a frankenstein room it was like yeah two of the guys that were like total like pc nerd heads and they're just like frankenstein in parts with pieces and they're like give me that gpu like you know and it's like you know we got so much shit plugged into his house he literally plugged in his christmas tree and the whole outlet caught on fire and the tree caught on fire yeah it's crazy shit (laughs) yeah so no it's funny well like the one the 3d scanning company i work with they have a spot in in uh, old city in philly now nice and they do some reselling for like drone equipment and 3d scanning equipment and all that. And it's like, it's very similar. It's a good, good market to they, be in, man. Use technology, stuff like that is killer. Yeah. yeah. And they, uh, it's funny because it's, it's, you were, you were, you were saying earlier that, you know, you essentially you, you identify kind of like a gap in the market. Yeah. And right now there's a, there's a gap that they've identified and they're actually developing their own software to try to try to fill that and actually hopefully soon i tell you man i've seen i've seen that now i think it's a trend that's really starting to happen is that 
there's a weird world where everybody is creating software that is specifically now niched for those markets only and they're they're blowing it up because a lot of it is crazy i mean i've seen like the pos stuff is like crazy i mean that's really where it is where it's like these pos slash like um internal like uh uh, accounts payable and inventory systems that all communicate together but are niche for that one industry like um i know there's a really big one that my wife just integrated into her place where she works at an eye doctor and it's just meant for like eye care specialists uh we're working with a company that's doing like inventory management for like beverages i know another one that's doing like we just brought one in that's like for marketing and branding companies only so like starting to see this trend where it's like all these people are trying to use like these big fortune 5000 companies that are only saying oh yeah our thing works for everybody but there's so many like niche stuff that is really like for that industry and people are coming in and really changing it on the software side and you know cloud based i mean people are still people are still using i want to see what how many people are still doing remote like server in the oh, back yeah. in the back closet right into the hard drive every night shit that still goes on and it's like dude that's just you can't be in that cuz now you can't log into that anywhere like i can't yeah. go onto my phone and log on to the so i mean that's the world that we're seeing is just more of the accessibility to the oh yeah the software itself no, the, the main software that i use is is subscription based so i pay a monthly fee and guess what and then, that that fee is helping them develop even more and kick an ass with it oh yeah well and it's funny because it used to be you'd have to buy it outright and i literally like a license used to when i first started back in 09 my license for my software was like six thousand dollars so I had to figure out a way to get $6,000, but then I also had an employee. So I actually really had to figure out a way to get $12,000 to just pay for, you know, and of course it took me like, I got, got, I think I did credit cards with it or something, but it took me a couple of years to pay all that stuff off. Right. Yeah. Or 10 bucks you know? a month. Yeah. And then it was like, or not, yeah, now I do. A, I mean, mine, it's a couple hundred bucks a month. Yeah. But, but still, it's still yeah. not six it's grand still, out of your pocket. Yeah, I would rather do that. And there's options. You I mean, look at anyway. Adobe. Adobe's been doing that for how yep. long now? Yep. Because they were getting they were yeah. getting they were getting crushed from pirates, man. Pirates uh -huh. were crushing them, and now it's but now it's it's crazy. It's twenty dollars a month per program. Right. Big money, dude. Yeah, ours are actually packaged where you you. It's actually cheaper for you to buy. Um, like so, I have Revit, Autodesk, or I'm sorry, AutoCAD. And a couple other programs, it's cheaper to buy them as a package together than to buy well, that's, them. That's how they get you. Yeah, yeah. The more but, you buy, that's the classic. The more you buy, the better the deal, baby. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, but if I, yeah, obviously if I buy it individually, but but the other thing is is, and I find some resistance from some people in my industry is there's essentially a an add on where I can save my files to a cloud server, and mm. that gives me the ability to say, hey especially if I'm like going to outsource work, I, I call up the person I'm outsourcing to and I'm like, Hey, I got to set up here. All you got to do is just log in and open up the file. I'm going to open up the file too. We can work on it at the same time. And we save it to the cloud server best. as if we were working in a network environment in a, in a, yeah, in a office. It's the best. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. So, and it's like for like a hundred bucks, there's just like people who are like, well, it's a hundred dollars. That's way too much. I'm like, no, it's not. You know how much we're going to get done? <laughs> how much we can make if we do this? <laughs> well, and I think what's great about that too is that like the subscription based services are really allowing those companies to like grow. I mean, like, I mean, look, mm -hmm. we look at the beginning, like, right. So when, when Xbox Live came out, Xbox Live is always charged. It's always been $50, right? So like, yep. You want to play online, it's 50 bucks. And then Sony was playing catch up during the PS3 days and actually won that console war in the end, believe it or not. They sold more PS3s and 360s at the end of the life cycle, which is crazy but sony also always has a 10-year life cycle dedicated to every console always 10-year minimum on every console so if you've got a ps4 you still got a long time for them to stop making ps4 games mm -hmm. anyway um you know and sony was trying to play catch up and they were like oh free online free online you can play online for free and you could see the difference and then they started charging for it and now the playstation network is killer yeah. so i think i think that's that's important is to have those subscription-based models but you know, and 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 with that, it, it's crazy to just see where like the online gaming like process has like changed so much. I mean, you know, I mean, obviously all the PC people are like 
oh, you noobs, we've been playing, we've been playing online yeah. since Doom 2. Like, right. get out of here, you know. And <laughs> but like you're starting to see, like, I mean, look at the look at the models that are going on right now, the games that they're playing in competition, like with like Warzone and Call of Duty, like dude, Call of Duty Warzone is a free download. It is a yeah. hundred gig free download. Oh, yeah, yeah. But it's a free <laughs> download. And yeah. like this new free-to-play model is kind of changing the way that people play games too right so like mm -hmm. um I, i've been playing a, a new one called vigor v-i-g-o-r it's great um mm -hmm. and it's kind of the same thing but it's definitely not as big as <laughs> as duty as something like 20 gigs to download but yeah you're starting to see that competition and so many people are playing games online especially over this last year i mean it's insane and plus oh, we yeah. had we had a uh uh um a console release we had a dual console release this year too which is crazy so like you know the industry as a whole is at like 75 plus billion dollars mm -hmm. you know it's made video games last year made more money than movies music and north american sports combined right what mm -hmm. and esports <laughs> as a whole which is just this little baby infant child is a just under two billion and it's crazy to see the, you know, people playing games online is now really nuts. I mean, I think I think what the the the, the generation gaps are starting to see is that really anybody that's under forty five years old, that's what we did, man. We played games. It's just what mm -hmm. we've done. So we've done since since we were kids, since we yeah. were younger. I mean, like the Atari guys, maybe not so much, but if you grew up as an NES kid, that's really where it started. You know, because yep. I know a lot of people that played like Atari and stuff and like Coleco and Intellivision and, and like Master System and all that kind of stuff. But really, mm -hmm. NES is really when it, you know, kind of the, the culture kind of started. And you got to remember, too, like when Famicom came out in Japan, they, they thought about it. It's just a, a kid's toy. And when it came over to the U.S., that's really when it kind of got the hype of being more of, you know, uh, and it, I mean, it's a great name. I think any, people forget that NES stands for Nintendo Entertainment System because it's yeah. what it was it was it was kind of this different kind of thing it's a pretty it's a pretty big jump from a company that started in the 1880s making hanafuda cards to making <laughs> to making full-blown nintendo consoles so yeah yeah no and i think i'm like i'm actually 46 right so i was in i was i was prime age when all yeah. that was coming out i mean no. i remember like you know going to my buddy's house down the street and he had super mario brothers and seeing that for the first time Man. and and all duck that hunt, stuff. i mean how dope was duck hunt when it first came out like it oh, was yeah. ridiculous and it sucks because you can't play any of those light gun games anymore because they actually the way that those guns works it's, it's the uh the, the remote uh re reflects off of the off of the tv so oh, the you glass. Hit that, yeah it's the infrared yeah. that that kicks off the glass and then reflects back into the gun and that's how uh -huh. the gun knows where you're at but there's no glass in any of the tvs anymore yeah. So you literally have an old CRT television, you know, to play it. And nobody wants an old one. I mean, <laughs> nobody wants like a 32 inch tube. Right, right, right. <laughs> it weighs it's like, like a, 700 pounds. Yeah, yeah. it's funny. Like, I, I think of like, you know, the WandaVision show. I'm sure you watched, you saw that. So amazing. Yeah. But like when the, they find the TV, you know, the, the TV uh, thing, and she's just like, I need old TVs. And they're yeah, like, it's like, good luck. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. it's funny though because i remember um i mean i was at my old house and i i ended up buying an nes like on ebay or something and my my oldest was maybe like 10 so Perfect. we set up the nes in his room and we got i had an old tv the old glass tv or whatever and cool. we were playing duck hunt and i, I like now it's funny that you, you said that because i never even thought about another really good light light gun game too if you can find it, if you still got that setup is uh hogan's alley Okay. okay that? Yeah. So yeah, when yeah. you play, you like shooting the bad guys. Uh, yeah, that's yeah, a, that was like, that's a, like the West, cop, right? the cop simulation kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I don't Great know one. if I still have that TV. To be quite honest, now that I think about it. <laughs> um, so you're thinking please. Wild Gunman? That was the Wild West one. Oh, okay. Hogan's yeah. Alley was like, uh, like the actual bad guys. Yeah. There wasn't okay. many. There was only a handful, and then there was Gun Gun uh, Gumshoe too. Yeah. So it's just those so. four or five. Well, so it's funny. Well, it's funny. But yesterday, again, you know, my oldest, he's now 16. So he's at that age where like his one buddy now has his license. So they're on spring break this week from from school. 
his buddy stopped over. They went to Woodbury to uh, what's the new place that's at, at the mall? Uh, not Woodbury, uh, Deford, round, Deford. Uh, like round one or something. Round one, yeah. Because he goes, he goes, oh, I'm going to an arcade, and I'm like, arcade. well, there's a, well, there's an actual arcade in the Deford Mall. Yeah, like yeah. legit, like not that place. Like the guy has like old school machines, like MK2 and and all that in there. Right, right. So, but yeah, but he ended up going to round one, and I was like, that's cool, you know, like I it was. I, I just love that he was just like, didn't call it round one. He just said, dad, I'm going to the mall. We're going to the arcade. I was like, <laughs> oh, I got the feels. Like, I got, it took me back. <laughs> that's, you you know, know, I don't know. It's just, they, don't, they don't get it, man. There's something magical about that back in the day. And then there was always like, there's always that one kid that like knew all the, all the Mortal Kombat fatalities and the game had only yep. been out for two days. And I'm like, dude, uh-huh. how do you know how to do that already? I'm like, there is no internet here, bud. Like, it's 1994. Like, what is happening? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I was yeah, because I would. Well, I was always into uh, like NBA Jam, and Let's go that game, all day. Like, on Friday nights, you'd go and like you'd hardly could get a chance to even even get to the game. You know, there was just a huge crowd around that all night long. Or if you get lucky, <laughs> they got like the six player X Men. Ah, yes, yes. All running off that Konami engine, like uh, uh, Simpsons ran off of that engine right? too. Yep. That was a great. Uh, the Turtles turtles ran off that engine it was a great like just konami had developed this amazing side scroller beat up engine that was just phenomenal phenomenal yeah yeah no it's funny i had, I had a conversation where like we were talking about marvel movies with my son and i just was like telling him how like this i'm like the x-men movies are okay but i, I really wish the x-men would be like <laughs> top the top notch version and hopefully maybe in the future Dude, it's they'll, coming, they'll launch that it's coming yeah. it's all coming they're, they're they're setting it all up for dr strange in the end watch oh yeah That's yeah so but it's crazy yeah. right so like all that coming on like i i and it's funny to see like i hear this all the time like because i don't i don't watch a lot of people playing games online right with the esports stuff but like i do yeah. watch some of it and people are like i don't know how you can watch guys play video games online i'm like i don't know how you can watch people play football I'm like, right. why do you watch people play football? Because you're not good at football, right? And they're like, well, yeah. And I'm like, well, this dude is nasty at Call of Duty and can do a no-scope snipe from a 1,000 feet away. So I could never do that shit. So I'm going to yeah. watch this guy just murk everybody all day. Like, it's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Now, I'll, I'll sit there and watch my son because I, I suck at the one, the first-person shooters. And we'll yeah. play, like, uh, Star Wars. What is it? Star Wars Battleground? Uh, yeah, Battlefront. Or, Battlefront, yeah. And uh, I'll I'll play for a little bit, and he'll just like he'll just wreck me, and I'm like, you know what? Yeah, I'll dude. just watch you play. It's cool, you know. If I didn't have but a he, job too, I would be sick of video games. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But uh, <laughs> but he, I think I've told you this before, but like one when, when I was watching my, I came downstairs, my son was playing. I thought he was playing, but yeah, he was just watching somebody play, and I was just like, I, I asked him that exact question, and I was just like, well, why are you watching somebody? play video games and he turned to me he's like well you watch the eagles on sunday and i was like that's a good point <laughs> touche young man yes i was like all right continue what you're doing it's fine <laughs> you know yeah i mean i don't know it's just people are good man i mean there's a lot of game i mean i i don't really do a lot of the fps stuff anymore kind of more of an old school guy uh-huh. but you know i play i play everything so yeah i i purposely don't really get much onto the video games i because i just know how i was i how it used to be it's like i just avoid i just i'm like no i'll I'll just get so sucked in and i got three kids and and all that so (laughs) i'm bad enough with the board games so (laughs) i'll I'll stick with that for now (laughs) yeah i mean they're they're doing a lot of stuff right i'm really curious to see kind of where the evolution of like the esports stuff comes into because you know you've got like the classic shooters that everybody's doing um, you've got like fighting games, like, you know, they're doing like Mortal Kombat Street Fighter mostly. I mean, there's some other stuff out there. Uh, and then you got like, uh, Diablo and, and they're doing all that MOBA stuff. Uh, but I, you know, I think there's a huge audience out there, um, to do like, you know, like legit old school competitions for like mm-hmm. stuff under like PS, like PS2 and under. It's like, yeah. I think it's like. Uh, an area that can really expand the market. Um, it could kind of like, it's almost like, uh, like getting the licensing to reruns. That's how I look at it. Right. Like the TV land stuff is kind of like, you know, just old shit that people forgot about, but people loved. Like, I yep. would love to see like SOCOM two tournaments on PS2. 
you know, yeah. like stuff that people played a lot back in the day that maybe got lost because now we're at PS5 and Xbox, whatever they're calling it these days, you know, yeah. and, you know, there's a lot of stuff out there. Like, you know, I think people would be all over like Mortal Kombat 2 Super Nintendo tournaments. And I think yeah. people would love to watch live, you know, Mario speed run competitions and things like that. Like, I think there's a lot of, a lot of opportunity for old school esports to really kind of make its way. And I know everyone's really into, you know, uh, uh, all the shooters and, you know, soccer with, with RC cars and, and Fortnite and oh, all okay. that, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. but I think there's, I, there's an opportunity. Like, I mean, even just like old school halo, man, like be great mm-hmm. to see it. Just like halo one straight up. You know that people are going to use the the handgun. That's just really OP, but you just got to know how to play right. You know, hang them high, uh, capture the flag on hang them high with shotguns only or something like let's yeah. let's let's switch it up and see what happens. And I think there's a, a huge audience out there to to watch kind of like the fun Xbox original yeah. stuff to kind of come well, out. I, I watched the other night I was just going through the channels and uh, Swingers was on. <laughs> nice you know it's great and they had the, it was it was the scene the the nhl 95 scene where he makes gretzky's head bleed it's if great you, if you remember the scene you know yep. Yep. That, that took me back i mean that was that was college for me freshman year sophomore oh, year yeah. born, people you know? che- people cheating with the with the just score in the corner of the goal I know yeah, yeah, all yeah. That. just all that like i yeah i think you know when you're, you're talking about that i'm like you could, i think you could even go further back yeah, some of that stuff. I think it opens up the, the the world for that kind of stuff, and I think people want to see it. And then, you know, you can do a lot of you can have a lot of fun with. There's such a catalog of old stuff, man. That's that's, I think, kind of left out of the uh, the equation because everyone wants to play Fortnite and Overwatch and all that stuff, which is yeah, great. Yeah. And you know, those things are awesome. But you know, I think part of that too is understanding, like, you know, what does the mental health elements look like for that as well too? Because when people say that they're training. You know, when they hear training, they're like, oh, the kids are training. It's like, no, the kids are playing games. Mm-hmm. And like, there's a lot of coaches that are out there now that for some of the, you know, the more established like uh, collegiate leagues and like the major leagues of, of esports that are integrating mental and physical health into the training sessions. Um, right. You know, there's a, there's a guy, I think he's in Japan. He was like the street fighter champion. He's got a street fighter team that he runs. And part of their stuff is, no, we're going outside for two hours and we're exercising. Like right. that's what we do. And, you know, we're not eating Mountain Dew and, and Doritos all day. Like we're actually like doing balanced diets because like if you are mentally and physically fit, then you're more sharp when you're playing games. Like it's just a facts. So yeah. it's good to see that that's coming in because some of these teams, I mean, are making a lot of money and there's a lot of special interest groups that are kind of making their way into it. I mean, Remember, the kids that won the Fortnite competition in 2019 won more money than the guy who won Wimbledon. Right. That's crazy shit, dude. Like, mm-hmm. the guys in a, a pro tennis player are making $2.7 million, and the kids that won a Fortnite competition won $3 million bucks. Yeah. What? And they're only, like, 15, 16 years old. Like, that's crazy money. So, yeah. Yeah, and I've, and in, I've seen, um, you know, with some of the people I've met, through some of the esports stuff where you know they were telling me about like how professional sports teams like and the nba is like a really great oh it's come terms of that thing where they have you know the, the sixers built their new facility in camden right well there's an esports section to that training facility for their their uh, nba 2k they, team they play the shit out of 2k all day 2k is a big freaking deal like yeah, that, that's all coming in and all the ex athletes are all coming into. I mean, look at look at Marshawn Lynch, right? Marshawn Lynch is involved with that uh, uh, that football league, which is like the it's fan controlled football. And it's oh, like yeah. a, it's like a gamification of football where like you download an app. There's five plays available. Everybody picks a play. And then whoever gets the majority, that's the play that the team runs. So yeah. there is no like head coach like the fans are like coaching the, the team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like you're seeing this gamification element getting integrated into a lot of people's like day to day lives because oh, yeah. people well, love games, dude. They just love yeah. games. Well, look at all the sports betting. Like you can sports, you can live sports bet now on like a, a particular play, right? You know, Crazy. I was, you know, I'm watching the Sixers game last night. Every commercial cycle, one of those sports betting apps comes up. 
you know, the fancy sports, things like that. Yeah. So it's all, it's all inter- intertwining. <laughs> it's <laughs> and, coming, man. It's crazy. Heck it's already here <laughs> to be quite honest. And you well, know, sports is through the roof now. I'm like I said, from last year, people were stuck in the house. Like you're just going to watch people play games. Like that's yeah. what they're going to do. Yeah. It's gonna I, happen. I've seen how the casinos try to jump on it. They want stuff in their facilities because they see it, you know, there's, 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 there's a revenue stream there for them, but they're also seeing it as a marketing tool. Now they can market, I guess, legally to younger audience. under 18. Yeah. Right? But the problem with that look- is, is that people are trying to jump in like head first and not understanding that if you're creating an esports arena or some sort of a, a facility that's going to host esports, you need to understand the technical oh, difficulties of that. Yep. I mean, it's, it's not just like, bring the Comcast guy up and put a little router in the middle of the corner and go, okay, the password is uh, gap 4687. Everybody yeah. log in. Like, no dude, like you need to have like a full, like, I mean, it's insane. You got to have like a cloud service, like inside your facility with all like cat six, all run hardwired yep. and uh, refresh rates of all the screens need to be like uh, unbelievable. Like it is, it is a, a large, large investment. Yeah, no, so. I, I, you know, I sat down with somebody who was looking to do stuff in, in some of the casinos in Atlantic City. And I mean, you know who it is. Um, but, uh, you know, one of the things we, we talked about was like, look, these theaters and that they have probably the audiovisual is covered. But I'm like, we need to go in and see feasibility in terms of what things you're just saying there. You know, all yeah. the, the Internet, the, the networking capabilities, all that stuff, because they're, you know, power. Like they may not even have enough power yeah. for, for that stuff. I think if anybody has the opportunity to do it, it's probably Hard Rock just because they're the newest, right? And they have that mm-hmm. amazing facility that can that can sit like 7,500 people, which would be awesome. And then yeah. they have everybody on the stage and running all the power for that. But like, again, it, it's more than just kind of click clack. And I'll tell you right now, those people will get pissed if like shit is not working right. Like those yeah. organizations will just never come again. Right. You know, it's like, yeah. it's like having like a football game and, you know, you've not, everybody's got pads. Mm-hmm. Yep. 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 <laughs> you know, we're not coming back here. Yeah. Yeah. Personally, I think ocean is, is might be the best equipped because I don't know if a lot of people know this, but there's a second theater space in that building that's never I, open. I never knew that. Yeah. And it, it seats, it seats maybe, I mean, it was originally cause I, I'm again I worked on the project. But that theater space seats maybe about 550 people. Um, it was supposed to be kind of like a maybe like a comedy club, cool. or or if they had some type of Cirque du Soleil, not Cirque du Soleil, but some yeah, type but of. Can I act. tell you, 550 people is nothing for esports. And if they're gonna do mm-hmm. like some sort of a championship, I mean, dude, in South Korea they did Riot Games does uh, League of Legends. They had like over a hundred thousand people or a hundred yeah. million people something ridiculous yeah well do you think uh, so so like if we talk about esports but i mean you're talking like the professional leagues but what about the more local because i know there's a high school clubs college clubs yeah you know, so i mean there. yeah that's that's the uh the crazy part is um uh you're starting to see the the actual like creation of those things happen so like there's like pro leagues that are coming in which is like the philly fusion and all that kind of stuff but then yeah. you're seeing a lot of collegiate leagues that's really where there's a lot going on so college leagues that are going on and think of it as like having like a baseball team a football team a hockey team you know a field hockey team a track and field team but the equivalent to that is a different game yeah so there's like a Fortnite team and there's a rocket league team and there's a Diablo team and there's a Street Fighter team. I mean, depends on where it is. And it also depends on what the other schools are playing and what those leagues look like and what the competition for those leagues are. But then you can mm-hmm. also create your team as as like Stockton. I know Stockton has a pretty good um, um, uh, Rocket League team. But if they created like a different team that was like, you know, we play Mortal Kombat, then they could either be part of the collegiate Mortal Kombat leagues or find other independent leagues that are running mortal Kombat tournaments and then be mm-hmm. a team within that league right so it's crazy no, and, well do they have anything in terms of like i'm just thinking of like an olympics right where you have four or five ten games whatever it is each college has their their different 
you know, the, the, the rocket the you know, that type of thing. Don't where think you there is multiple... anything. I don't think there is anything like that. Not that I'm aware of. Okay. But I mean, I'm sure that that stuff is coming at some point. Mm-hmm. Esports looks like actually I'm just doing live live reads here. We're talking about integrating esports, hope possibly into 2024 Olympics, oh, Summer wow. Olympics. Okay, <laughs> doesn't surprise me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, what that yeah. consists of, I'm not sure, but I'm sure that right. something's gonna be. You know, look, here's what it is: if something's making money and there's opportunities to sponsor things and there's opportunities to push out product lines and brand those things and market those things. Everyone's going to be jumping on board. You know, the esports train is is setting sail. It's already in the middle of the ocean, and people are like, "Video games are stupid." I'm like, "Yeah, but it was." But esports was a 1.8 billion dollar industry last year, and the video game industry as a whole was over 75 billion. And they're like, "Actually, I really like video games." I just remember, you know, like that's the mentality that's going on right now. And yeah. you know, when you have this Gen Z group, and you know, the millennial group like us. And kind of the Gen X that's all kind of living in that same kind of like ecosystem. That's the audience to go after. The 50 and under is where it's at. Everybody above a certain age. I mean, like I said this the other day, like it's absurd how different like one generation to the next is, right? Mm -hmm. Like my dad would never have like a Batman figure on his on his dresser. Right. Ever. Never, Mm -hmm. ever. I'm like, and then, you know, like this is where I hang out and yep. there's nerd culture all over my house. Mm-hmm. So like, it's just the way it's going, man. And like, you know, my mom can have little baby snow angels and have a, a whole case full of them. But if I have Batman and Superman, that's weird. I'm like, same shit, dude. Like you're out of your yeah. mind. <laughs> different. Yeah. Same shit, different knickknack. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, well, yeah. And it's funny too. Cause it's like, you know, to get back to like the college with the esports is there. I mean, there's scholarships out there for students now. Oh, it's coming in hot, man. Through those. Yeah. yeah. And there's high school teams too. Yeah. High school yeah. esports is starting to get really big now too. Yeah. I've, I've seen that. And I always kind of, well, I have a, I don't talk too much about it because it's just a business idea, but I always thought that, you know, when we were talking about arcades earlier, yeah. Is there a potential to have local arcades again? but like geared more towards esports in some way. Um, yeah. I mean, uh, I mean the competition world is where it's at. Yeah. And if you have a facility that that's there, it's good. Uh, I would say that the arcade, the arcade world has changed. Right. Um, mm-hmm. And I think that you need to have beer, which is why the barcade guys do so well because all people right. want to play and drink because it's all a certain age. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I think also part of it too is understanding that, you know, arcades are starting to come hot again. I mean, look at one up one up does a great job on doing all the emulation arcade machines that you can buy, you know, they have, they have uh, all kinds of stuff, NBA jam and they have X-Men and they have all this stuff or X-Men versus street fighter. And they're like 300 bucks and you just kind of throw one in the corner of your basement. And it's like super cool to have like old school arcades again. So you know, I think people missed the arcade world a lot and it died mostly because the home consoles came out and mm-hmm. the last really, I think the last really big arcade stuff that you saw was probably around the mid 2000, 2001, right? Uh, Marvel vs. Capcom 2 was like amazing as an mm-hmm. arcade machine. Um, and then Dreamcast really did like probably one of the greatest like arcade ports of all time uh, with Marvel vs. Capcom 2 on the Dreamcast. And I think that was mm-hmm. kind of the beginning of the end which was already kind of dead, but people would definitely go to the arcades to play Marvel Capcom 2. Um, but I don't know. I would love to see, I would love to see the arcades come back and I love to go to an arcade. That's not just like tickets and toys. So, yeah, no. Cause I was about to say that I was like, Oh no, no. Kids will do the arcade. As long as you're getting tickets coming out of those. Yeah. No, nah, I don't got <laughs> time for that. that. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, no, I, I, I mean, I think of it as like, um, well, like you're like the, let's just I've seen with um with well with your board game shop had um you had an area where people could rent games yeah or, or play games all, like on a Saturday yeah so we had open like play that. tables and all that stuff yeah and you well you're you're over in Pennsylvania now right I am in PA yes are you like Westchester or uh, I'm something? down in Delco okay so because I believe there's a place in Westchester yeah been that, there at, uh, yeah. 
King's that's Cradle the, or something like that. Yeah, where they have where you can go in and you rent you rent a con not a console. Well, I guess they rent you rent. I think they were like renting the tables and stuff. I think you said. Okay, well, but for video, but video games. Oh yeah, I don't know that. I mean, there's a board game yeah. place in Westchester. Okay, yeah. So no, I'm talking about there's a, I think a video game place where they have like a room of PCs and that and you might be able to rent it out as a group. Cool. Or yeah. Um, I, I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but uh, I, I know I saw one there because, um, yeah, because there's there's even like, let's go to the board game side. Like you were mentioned, there's a board game shop, but there's like the I've seen board game shops that have like there's one in Philly. Oh, what is it called? That has like it has a cafe. Yeah, so great spot. Different. Yeah, I know those guys. Yeah, yeah they're they're awesome. down in Fairmount. Mm -hmm. uh, Thirsty Dice is the name. Yeah. So you can go, you rent a game, you rent whatever game and they have like hundreds of games and you and i know we know some of these games are pretty complicated <laughs> so yeah, there's a lot i mean there's also yeah. um thirsty dice is good and then there's another guy what's his I forget their name too. but yeah there's a lot of cool spots there uh starting a, a red cap too red cap where's red cap at uh he or? yeah he's down in philly too okay yeah no i've i've had a couple projects in the Fairmount area. So I've, I've gone by the thirsty dice a couple of times, but um, yeah, it's interesting. I just think that people are underestimating the the money that can be generated in nerd culture. And I think that's what you're going to wind up seeing in the next couple of years. And you're going to see kind of that, that old school mentality come back. And I think people are, um, you know, it's either you're either in with it or you're not. And if you're yeah. not, you're going to miss out on uh, opportunities to kind of, you know, integrate the money that, nerd culture has bring in and you know board games and video games i mean i said we say it all the time uh and it was one of the things we used to say about the store is that you know the dining room table was the first entertainment center and yep. it always has been and mm -hmm. you know people i think are are starting to be overwhelmed with all the content that is coming out from everybody and their mom creating uh some sort of you know plus integrated streaming services where everyone's like okay you know i'm done i'd rather play mm -hmm. something and i think you're seeing that happen and the cool thing is that there's tons of stuff for two players everywhere tons oh of yeah stuff. yeah yeah Great stuff yeah, jaipur city uh, lost cities is one of my favorites um patchwork love patchwork um you know rivals of Catan. i have that is great too and then like old school stuff too so mm -hmm. And I think there's yeah. opportunities to kind of go back in the old school um, board game world. Like prime example, people hate Monopoly because they don't play it correctly. Monopoly is right. only about an hour long if you play it the right way. Okay. Yeah. When you go around the board two times, all the properties are sold because if someone lands on a spot and doesn't buy it, it doesn't just get unsold. It goes to auction and right. auction starts at $10 for a property. And then mm -hmm. it goes around the table and it's an auction. And if you don't win it, then you don't win it. But, after everything sold two times, then you play the game. And it's actually the, one of the greasiest and funnest games ever because if you land on a space, you can wheel a deal all day. I mean, it's just yep. real estate. So you're like, look, I know I don't have the rent for this, but this is what I'm going to do. I'll give you my extra 200 bucks when I come back around go, and I'll give you this 20 bucks for now as a safe keep for it. And then you make your way around go, and they're like, all right, man, I, that 200 bucks, you're like, nah, it's not going to pay you. And yeah, it's yeah. like, oh, oh this, is what, this is how we're playing the game. This is how we're doing it. We're doing, playing greasy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it's great. And if you like that, um, I love Chinatown. Great. Okay. Board, it's a board game called Chinatown. Yeah. It's phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. It's, that's another one that's like super greasy. <laughs> they can wheel yeah, yeah, yeah. well, and deal in all day. I was, well, I'm one of them that I really like is called Food Chain Magnet. That's, okay. uh, that is a, uh, um, basically you run a restaurant. Okay. And you compete for um staff training marketing like so you market your restaurant um it's kind of has a real estate element as well because location 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 is part yeah, of it Yeah, love that um you know they just released an expansion too uh it's one of those games and you, i know you're familiar with this but it's like it's limited printing so yeah it's very hard to you, find yeah yeah it's hard to find or or it's just expensive um i ended up finding a good deal and i got it a few years back um, I've tried to get my kids to play with me. Um, it's been a little, <laughs> a little hard. Cause I think the cutthroat part, um, they kind of get a, cause especially my 16 year old, I don't, I don't go easy on them. 
love cutthroat. You know, Let's go. Yeah. Grease and town, had, all, grease town all day. Let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, even, you know, even when he, like solo games, there's a ton of solo games out there or solo variants of that game. Um, you know, that, that like, well, here's two things. I, I, I have, I have two games up on, on my screen that uh, I wanted to bring up at some point uh, because there are two games that I bought because of you. <laughs> <laughs> so um, one was speaking a little bit of cutthroat was a uh, sheriff of Nottingham. Love it. I actually played it last weekend with my brother. Yeah. It's one of my brother's all time favorites. Yeah. Yeah. Which is always just like, you know, basically Greasiest. The premise of that game is you're trying to go into uh, the market with your goods, but you have illegal goods and everybody gets a turn to be the sheriff. Trying to get, to say, trying to sneak shit across the board if you can. Yep. 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 So that's, that's great. My kids actually do like that one. Sheriff's great. Um, they yeah. just put out, they just put out a, a, a second version of that. Uh, which is uh, the version two is um, it's all new, um, all new uh, art and uh, it's got the expansions included in it as well. Yeah. So no, I have to look into that one. The other Great. one, speaking of artwork is Skype. That's oh. probably that the it's artwork insane. in that game is, is phenomenal. I don't like just the, the mech version and kind of, was it like world war one type, yeah timeline. it's amazing and there's a um, there's a there's a group of guys i forget i think those guys actually have like a, a, a site where you can upgrade all of the elements in the game and you can get like meeples for everything so you can get like wheat and and, okay. and the barrels and, and all that and it's just even more immersion but yeah, yeah it's like a 40 minute setup but the game is not that complex it's just classic yeah. like these are your steps one, two, three, and four. And on those steps, you can do X, Y, and Z, but you can only pick one. What are you going to do? And that's right. the big difference, right? Between the Amero and the European style, like the yep. American gameplays is all it's luck and then skill. And the Euro models are a lot of skill and then luck. So. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And, and there, yeah, like you dominate, like you could kind of think, okay, you, there's different factions or armies, right? So you can almost think it's like risk at first. Yeah. But you can, but there's different ways you can dominate the board, right? Totally. You no, know, same thing with uh, when I was mentioning that food chain game. It's like, yeah, you could try to like make the most burgers, or you could try to kind of outmarket your competition in some way, or Great. have the better staff and training, and you know, and you can win, and money. you can win any way. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I think there's also the other part, like especially when I found like I try to introduce it to whether my kids or friends is I'm like, oh, there's this really great, great game. And then they see this rule book that's like 20 pages it's plus. It's not that bad. It's just detail. Yeah. That's all it is, everybody. Yeah, Relax. Yeah. Don't be afraid of if there's just because there's a lot of pieces and the rule book is big. It's OK. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, yeah. It'll be it'll be all right. Give it yes. a chance. Yeah. Yeah. Just because the box of my favorite game weighs 30 pounds. If you saw Monopoly <laughs> and didn't know yeah. anything about it, you're like, I'm not playing this game. Look at all these pieces in here. Yeah. 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 Same thing. Yeah. So it's, yeah, it's, it's funny. I can't, that, uh, yeah, it, it seems some of the war games that like my brother-in-law, when I mentioned earlier, that's what he's really into. Uh, not me like memoir 40, like the, I forget. Memoir is great. Axis and allies. I think great is the one. One he's really Old into. school classic yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, he's really into those. Um, I get into the dungeon crawlers. Love person. that. Um, yeah, five minute dungeons. Great too. Yeah. I've seen, I've, I've, been considering getting that one i haven't i've been but um you know i've mentioned to you gloomhaven is by far my favorite game jesus that's a monster and, yeah that's that's the 30 pound box and i got another one coming later this year their their new one frosthaven but uh i've been that literally because i have a table in my basement that has pretty much been on my table for the past year love it i've hardly i've i took it down once because we were all going on vacation Cause I just felt like a pipe burst cause it's in the basement, just, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that type of thing. But no, I mean, it takes about half hour to 45 minutes to set up. Yeah. But it's worth it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But I mean, I think like all that, like in conclusion, like, I think like all that's going to be part of like where people are going to go, like the action figure world, the board game world, video game world, you know, all yeah. that pop culture stuff that people think is like, whatever, like, you know, it's, it's all coming. And, and the licensing element 
in it, anything that's being heavily licensed is going to be part of where the money's being made. I mean, remember Lego almost went out of business until they listened to Harry Potter. And now look at yep. Lego. It's insane. You yeah, know, the yeah. pops are the same way. Every time that you think that they can't think of anything else, I think eventually pop or the pops are going to run out of a licensing because they have so many things licensed. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, like just to go back to that game, Gloomhaven, they just launched their own comic books. Cause they can. And yeah, probably sold out in six minutes. Oh yeah, I mean, the the Frost Haven game last year when they did the Kickstarter, they raised twelve million dollars in twenty two minutes. Yeah, it was like ridiculous. I know. Yeah, they were just like they weren't even ready for it. Like they were like, oh, we'll have the game out by March of twenty twenty one, and here we are in April, and they're like, well, now it's going to be October because we have so many. They they got so much money. I guess you know so much. They raised so much money. They were like, we're making the game bigger. <laughs> <laughs> because we're adding characters we're you know adding 30 scenarios whatever it was but yeah it's just like you know 12 million dollars they probably raised 12 million dollars literally in a week yeah it's insane i mean and well when it's the same as good food if you make good food people will find it yeah you know yeah. and it's if you make a good game people will find it yeah no it's uh yeah so it's and it's it's interesting like you know running into you and you opening up i mean like i'm sure tiki tiki has people on those tables all all weekend long oh yeah right? i mean before everything happening yeah it was not stop so yeah yeah so um it's and yeah. you've got a whole generation now that has children so now that we're just raising our kids as nerds yeah and that's just what it is so that's what's happening i'm ready yeah. for it let's go yeah yeah so <laughs> Now it's good. Uh, well, and I'll actually I'll bring it back to what I do. The funny thing is when we we're talking about video games and stuff like that, the presentations in architecture have become more gamified. Awesome. Their uh, Twin Motion, which is one of the re uh, rendering software, they're uh, they were bought by Unreal, the Unreal Engine. Oh my God, it's amazing. You know, so to have the ability now. So to Epic make owns them. Yes. Wow. Yeah. So the it used to be. Like if we were doing a project, great, you know, Revel that well now Ocean down Ocean Sea. Like I said, I I worked on that project when it was first coming out. You know, in two thousand seven. You know, when we when they made their big announcement, it was like three or four high resolution renderings that were static images. Maybe there might have been a video of like a flyover of it or something, but it was pretty much like, hey, here's here's Revel, two and a half billion dollar casino. Here's a picture from above. Here's a picture from here. Here's a picture from there. And that was it. You know, now you do a full 3D walkthrough. People, will, people want the immersion. You know, they want the VR. They want it. They want they're comfortable with grabbing an Xbox controller and, and moving through a building, the, the building, you know, and it's just like, you know, the you know, the quality of those really high renderings to, to the game. Like I'll call it the gamified is. I mean, I would say the newer, like the game type engines isn't as good, but it's getting there. Oh, hell yeah. I you mean, the, if you can run the the Unreal Engine at full capacity, or you can run the Frostbite Engine or the, the ID Tech uh, or any of the, or the uh, uh, Glacier, like all those engines are ridiculous. ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's coming through, you know, not only, you know, you can use... Think of the medical field, you know, where we were talking about like stuff with online, you know, um, let's say there's a, a company that's developing some type of equipment in a surgery room. Now they can virtually test that, that stuff out. Yeah. Right. It's you know, endless, man. It really yeah. is. And then you've got things like HoloLens coming in and, and the, which is now kind of integrated itself into, into Microsoft mesh. And AR mm -hmm. and MR are just becoming going to be coming the norm within the next couple of years. It's going to be the way they're going to teach everybody is through MR and AR. So, yeah. Well, what I mean, I do AR is where I think a lot of there's a lot of possibilities. What is MR? I've never heard MR of is mixed reality. So it's utilizing okay. the environments themselves to like fully integrate the. So, like, if I have put my glasses on, I come up, I can have all my Spotify records across my whole room. And I'd okay. be like, oh, cool. What's that? Shh, play that. So. Yeah, yeah, it's the uh, what's the Tom Cruise movie? The not Mission yeah, it's Impossible. All, it's all Minority Report. Dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because no, I've I've seen things like for me, I've seen it. You know, you could you could actually 
place like real world points on like a architecture model. And I could stand in the middle of a field that's going to build like, let's say a new school or something. That's insane. I could stand right where the gymnasium is going to be. That's common. Yeah. It's already here, but it's just expensive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Some of it's like you have to hold, you used to have to hold like an iPad in front of you and kind of like. Not anymore. But yeah, it'll be, uh, it's, uh, this is all great stuff. <laughs> Love it, man. So cool. Um, well, actually I kind of did the game thing already. I was going to bring them up on the screen and, but we, it came into the conversation. So, <laughs> um, well, this was great, man. I, I appreciate yeah. it. It was like awesome to kind of chat and get everything situated. So it's uh there's yeah. a lot of stuff going on, man. Just got to be yeah, aware. Yeah. It's, it's hard to not be an old guy and get lost in the dust. I'll tell you what. <laughs> oh yeah. 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 No, and I think, uh, I think we got to figure out a time to, uh, um, bring some of these games out and get on, get on the table together and let's go all about it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Love that. Cause uh, you know, I think I'm personally just sick of doing, I mean, this is great getting on zoom, but I know it's a, this, let's, this, let's, this play some, it. let's play something, man. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let me know when I'll be there. All right, cool. All right. Well, yeah, Ryan, thanks a lot for coming back, coming on. Um, appreciate it. I appreciate it. Yeah. And good uh, stuff. Well, follow, if, you, if you're on the internet, uh, where's Harb? Find me. I'm um, on LinkedIn. Let's connect. Follow me on Instagram. Nothing crazy on the Instagram. Switched it up. So if you want to know all the random games that I play in my game room, that's where to find me. So yeah, and you you just beat me to my question. <laughs> like, how do you get in touch with you? And all that Let's stuff. connect. Clearbridgebranding.com. Check us out if we can help you grow your brand. Cool. All right, Ryan. Well, thanks again. And uh, we'll just throw some more Steely Dan. And we'll love that. Finish. Yeah. See you, everybody. Be safe.